Today, we're gonna fly over a majority of the California high-speed rail train route to see how construction is coming along, but also to get a better perspective of the kind of terrain standing in the way of finishing this gargantuan project. In fact, this is one of the most ambitious civil engineering projects in US history. And to earn that kind of status, it should be no surprise that it's also one of the most expensive. Its primary goal is to transport passengers 500 miles from Los Angeles to San Francisco on zero emission bullet trains at speeds up to 220 miles per hour. When first approved in 2008, the budget was originally $33 billion with a completion date of 2020. Here we are in 2024, and while construction has been going on for eight years, the final completion date of the Los Angeles to San Francisco segment is unknown, with the latest estimated budget of $106 billion if it gets finished in 2034, which it won't. In fact, the only section that is currently being built is a 119-mile stretch in the Central Valley between Bakersfield and Madera. With all the problems, delays, and cost overruns, many have questioned whether this train will ever get finished. But before we begin to explore the train route, I want to quickly tell you about a new Wolfelkorn project that I'm really excited about. My passions for both printing and capturing aerial landscapes have finally come together at wolfacornprints.com. There's something truly special about large, professionally printed images on textured paper, and it's now possible to own some of my favorite landscapes from both this and previous flights. You can find out more details below in the video description, but let's get back to California High Speed Rail by starting our northbound journey in downtown Los Angeles at Union Station. This Union Station to Burbank segment is 14 miles long and will utilize the existing Metrolink train right-of-way before then going underground as it reaches a station at Burbank Airport. The Burbank to Palmdale segment is 38 miles long and will be one of the most challenging and expensive sections of the entire route as it will require about 28 miles of tunneling beneath the San Gabriel mountain range while crossing directly over the San Andreas Fault. The orange line is the existing Metrolink train tracks. The magenta lines are the proposed underground routes, with the northernmost route being the most likely.
Right around here, the train will emerge from the tunnel, heading north until it reaches Palmdale Station. Looking to the east, you can see where the proposed High Desert Corridor would connect to the future Brightline West high-speed train to Las Vegas. Now let's head northwest on the Palmdale to Bakersfield section. This 80-mile stretch will connect the two cities in about 25 minutes travel time by initially crossing above ground through the Mojave Desert. nears the Tehachapi Mountains, the route will have a mix of both underground and aboveground sections as it navigates the difficult terrain. The route passes near to the famous Tehachapi Loop, a spiraling section of railroad built in 1876 to allow trains to navigate the steep terrain. Nearly 150 years later and this track is still very much in use, averaging 36 freight trains per day. Bakersfield Station marks the southernmost point of where the train route will initially begin operating, sometime around 2030. Leaving Bakersfield behind, we need to travel another 12 miles to the town of Shafter to begin seeing the 114 mile section where the vast majority of construction has been taking place.
Referred to as the initial operating segment, this is the only section of the route that currently has the funds for completion. So far during construction, over $11 billion has been spent, 13,000 jobs created, with over 45 structures already completed, and dozens more under construction. The next stop on the route is the King's Tulare Station. This seemingly isolated location will serve as the regional hub for the nearby cities of Hanford and Visalia. Heading north again, it's about 30 miles until the next stop in Fresno. Upon entering Fresno, the 3,700 foot long Cedar Viaduct crosses Highway 99 on its way to downtown. Following a mix of both above ground and underground track, Fresno Station will conveniently serve the heart of downtown. We then head northwest another 25 miles to the next stop in the town of Madera.
Madeira is the northernmost point of the current construction and it's here where today's journey ends. We've traveled approximately 270 miles along the future train route and by seeing it from above, I have to say that I'm left with a feeling of optimism about the future of this project and the grand vision of high-speed rail in California. Yes, the budget has exploded. And yes, there's been mismanagement. And yes, I would love to see this thing finish quicker. But a project of this scale was never going to go smoothly. It's baked into the equation. But I certainly plan on taking a ride on that train when it's finished. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, and don't forget to go check out wolfacornprints.com where you can get a printed image from today's flight and also from other flights. And with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one.